Today we're gonna rank the watches made by Patek Philippe from absolute dog sh** to god tier. Yeah, uh, Hublot and dog shit is equally the same. I didn't want to swear in this video. That's why I didn't want to use that word. Thank you very much for ruining that, Johnny. Oh, I believe that the word. Aye, thank you, thank you. I'm looking forward to this. Before we get into the video, make sure you are going to buy your next watch from prideandpinion.com. Can you put it somewhere? Can you put a big logo on there? And also, if you want to sell your watch. And also, if you want to sell your watch, prideandpinion.com. Now, let's get stuck in this tier list. What a great start of this tier list, ladies and gentlemen. The Patek Philippe. 24. This was Patek Philippe in 1999. They wanted to make it tank They also uh, wanted to be ahead of the woke culture and started making exclusive ladies' watches because, I mean, ladies are important in the world too. It's facts! It's facts! These are not facts. These are not facts. So, they got their own line of watches. The only problem is it miserably failed and they're absolutely a f horrendous. I think the Patek Philippe 24 is one of the biggest pieces of sh Patek Philippe has ever produced and I'm trying to say that nicely. Yeah, that's absolutely horrendous. We'll put that in the shite category. I am gonna get absolutely rinsed. Rinsed. I'm gonna get absolutely rinsed for this video. I know for a fact and I'm gonna enjoy every comment, every second, every bit of it. So come and give it to me, son. You don't even need to use lube, love. Patek Philippe Nautilus. 5726. The first time Patek Philippe has put a annual calendar or a calendar complication, so an annual calendar or a perpetual calendar, not a weekly calendar, which is also a calendar complication, which I see is also on this tier list. I'll talk about that later. But the first time that Patek Philippe has put a higher complication in their sports line, in their sports watch, with reference number 5726. A watch that comes in several variations, including on the strap, but also it was first introduced in steel with the grey dial. This is in steel with the blue dial. I like the watch. I like the Nautilus. I think it's a nice watch. I don't think it's worth the hype in any way, shape or form. But from all the Nautiluses, this is the first Nautilus I ever owned. I enjoyed it. I loved it. My big problem with the 5726 was the thickness. Because of the complication, it was a thicker watch. And I think the beauty of the Nautilus, and if you look at the 5712, 5711, 5811, 5740, if you look at all these watches, you see how slick it is, how beautiful it fits on the wrist, how incredibly synchronized the bracelet is with the case. I know it sounded a wee bit gay, I'm sorry, but I do get a hard on from synchronization like that, right? The 5726 is just for me too thick and this is one of the reasons why I sold the watch. I don't think the balance is right, but I love the effort, I love the Nautilus on its own, I do think that it deserves its credit and that's why I put it in the Merc category. Did you expect that? Um, to be honest, I wasn't really thinking. And to be honest, you couldn't give a fuck. No. Fair enough. That's the big guns. 5270p. We're gonna talk. We actually have this watch in the office in this exact configuration. So bear with me. I'm gonna get it now. Let me see. Any 5270s here? No. 5270. Thank you very much. 5270, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. There we go. There we go. This watch has a history. It's insane. I mean, the synchronization of the watch with this case does give me hard ons as well, to be honest. Right, 5270, the perpetual calendar chronograph. One of the most important complications of the brand. And I think that this combination of complications is arguably the reason why Patek Philippe is Patek Philippe. There's an incredible story with this that starts in the early 40s. Patek Philippe was known as a luxury brand, by the way. Gold watches, and it was considered an expensive watch brand. In 1932, when the Stern family bought Patek Philippe, they made it into a big, big success, basically from the start. From the late 30s and early 40s, Patek Philippe was considered a luxury brand. They weren't known for making complicated watches. They did make complicated watches, but this was only on special request. On request of someone that was willing to pay a lot of money, they had to be a an important person. From about the early 40s, the first ever production complication, so a complicated watch that Patek Philippe brought out as a production line, was the Perpetual Calendar Chronograph with reference number 1518. Insane. People paid a big, big premium for this specific dial, and I think that this is the end game. Owning a 5970 or a 5270 Platinum, ideally with the salmon dial, that's end game. That's me done. That is just... You know what? I never use the terminology God tier like but because of the importance of this reference number and because of the importance of this watch and because this beautiful dial, I am going to put this in the gold tier category. I am wearing that exact 5320 that you have on the photo there and that makes it 
quite cool. I love the 5320. Again, a perpetual calendar, not a chronograph in this case. It's just a really interesting watch. A watch that doesn't really have a history. This watch was introduced in 2017, still in production today, heavily inspired on the 40s. Other than that, it doesn't have much of a history, but I do really love this watch. I'm gonna put this watch in a wood buy category. I actually think that the watch retails is about $97,000 and that's no dog shade. But I actually think you can pick these up. How much do we have this on at Pride and Pay? Let me see. £59,950. To be honest, a near enough brand new perpetual calendar from one of the most prestigious watch brands in the world for 60K sterling is a f joke. I would buy this watch. That's why I put, put it in the wood buy category, not because I want to sell it. This video is a paid partnership with BetterHelp. Mental health has never been as important as it is today. And it doesn't matter in what situation in life you are. If you're living at your parents or you're wrecking Ferraris like me. <laughs> Mental health can affect everyone. It also affected me, and this is the reason why I speak with someone at least once a week. This time last year, I went through a rough patch, and I got through it by talking to people, talking to therapists. This is where BetterHelp comes in. BetterHelp connects you to professional therapists all over the world. In the UK alone, there are over a thousand therapists that you can phone, text, message, or even video call. Whatever is comfortable for you. It's funny how people go to the gym five times a week and look after their physique, but they don't give their own mind the same attention. Over 4 million people have used BetterHelp to live a healthier and happier life. To get started, you fill in a questionnaire. BetterHelp then assesses your needs and matches you with a therapist. If you do not like this therapist after one session, you can switch as many times as you want. Looking after your mental health needs to be one of your top priorities. If you think you might benefit from therapy, please click on the first link in the description. You get 10% off in your first month. And let me tell you, it's definitely worth a try. And let's now rank some Patex. Next up, 5212. This is the weekly calendar, reference number 5212. A watch that I'm very proud to say I have in my personal collection. I paid 50,000 pounds for that watch and that watch is now worth 20,000 pounds less. That's amazing. <laughs> You should actually think I should hate this watch, but I don't, I still love it. The first time since 1996 that Patek Philippe has introduced a new calendar complication. In 1925, the first ever Patek Philippe perpetual calendar was introduced. A perpetual calendar is a non-ending calendar, because that's why it's called perpetual, it's non-ending. It's not complete and entirely true, to be honest, because the calendar ends in the year 2100, but who gives a f everyone is dead by then anyway. No, no, my son will still be alive because he's strong genes, I will be f dead. I don't see my, my son buying f Patek's at the moment, am I? He's 15 months, by the way. A perpetual calendar is a calendar that can tell you the year, the day, the month, the date, everything, including the position of the moon, if you're lucky. And it's all done mechanically. There's no electricity, there's no computer in this. Give you all this information, all done by a mechanical movement. That's impressive. This perpetual calendar, this small watch, which has a diameter of 40 millimeters, contains about 360 components in and around. That's why watches are so insanely expensive. Definitely before the times of computers, etc., what we have now. To give you an idea, in 1941, in the beginning of the Second World War, Patek Philippe is produced their first ever series perpetual calendar with reference number 1526. I mean, we're talking about the 40s. You didn't have a computer to ask, how the f do I make a perpetual calendar? How the f can I build a watch that tells me the year, the month, the day, the date, what time it is, position of the moon, and when I need to go for a sh Still today, the perpetual calendars are considered extremely complicated and extremely expensive. And that's why in 1996, Patek Philippe introduced the annual calendar. The difference with the perpetual calendar and the annual calendar is, is that the annual calendar is accurate for 364 days. It's accurate till the end of the year, from the 1st of January to the 31st of December. The watch that you see here, reference number 5212, the weekly calendar. The reason why I consider that special is because it's the first ever calendar complication that was introduced after the annual calendar. So we have the perpetual calendar, the annual calendar, and now as well, the weekly calendar. The difference between the annual calendar and the weekly calendar is the fact that you now also have the week number on your dial. And the way the 5212 is laid out, the way the dial is, it is absolutely spectacular. The 5212 is class. Right, annual calendar 5205. I don't really have to dive deep into that, to be honest. There's several variations, several medals, several dials. I'm gonna put that in the me category. Let me explain. I 
do like the annual calendar. I do like that complication, but I don't like the case shape. I don't really like the bulkiness of the watch. So I, that's why I put it in the Merc category. Sorry about that. I don't really feel sorry about anything, to be completely honest. Go f*** yourself. Calatrava. This is reference number 5227. It actually dates back from reference number 5107, which was introduced in 2000 and discontinued in 2009, I believe. I want to show you natural progression to the models where it is today. So it started in the year 2000 with reference number 5107 that became 5127 it's a very similar watch that then was dis discontinued and that's now this model the 5227 a watch that is half decent looks all right but to be honest you shouldn't be buying that because it's absolutely horrendous it's just average, mate. This is the watch that people buy because they got this offered because they want to buy an Aquanaut or a Nautilus. This is like the slot. It's a disgrace, to be honest. And this is how I look at that particular watch. It's shit. No, it's blow. I actually think it should be the blow. No one has ever bought that watch walking into the Patek Philippe boutique and saying, I love that so much. Here's 30,000 points. Give me that watch. No one has ever done that. 5531. Can I talk about that later? Can I skip through or do I need to do this in this order? Right, let's talk about this later. This is daddy shit. I cannot talk about the 5531 before I talk about the 5231. It's the enamel world timer. I had the yellow gold one. I recently sold that watch to a lovely, lovely new owner. Last year, Patek Philippe discontinued the yellow gold 5231 and reintroduced that 5231 and white gold. That's the world timer. I think that's always in every way possible a watch that should be in the class category. A world timer is a watch that can tell you the time in 24 cities in one go. The 5531 one is a combination, the first ever combination of two complications. A world timer, which we just described, just discussed, but also a minute repeater. Do you know what a minute repeater is? Yeah, it chimes the time. Exactly. A repeater watch is a watch that chimes the time mechanically using chong, chongs, or using, what do you call those? Gongs, chimes the time. This allows you to hear what time it actually is. Think about your grandfather's clock if there was a... Think about your grandfather's clock. <laughs> Like, I mean, the Chinese had wall clocks, right? Ching chong, ching ching ching, like <laughs> something like that, yeah. right? <laughs> Stop this, right now! <laughs> a repeater, a repeater watch doesn't show you the time, it chimes you the time. Back in the day, you had hour repeaters, so that would chime you the hour. You had quarter repeaters that would be able to accurately tell you the hour and the quarter. 10 minute repeaters, five minute repeaters, and of course, nine minute repeaters. The more towards today, the more accurate the movements were. So a minute repeater can chime you the time exactly. It's insane. You set the time on the city you want, and there's 24 cities, it will accurately chime the time of that time zone. That's insane. That's the first time these two complications have come together. That's engineering at its finest. Keep in mind, this is all mechanical, nothing computers, no electronics. For that, this watch is f***ing out here. By the way, the watch is worth like 1.5 million today. Aquanaut, find it boring don't really want to talk about it it's all right nice watch whatever no i don't like it i don't know conflicted annual calendar in aquanaut same story aquanaut was introduced in 1997 interesting blah blah blah. i'm not really big fan of the aquanaut i think it's so far beyond what patek philippe should be making do i think it's shit? absolutely not so i'm just gonna put the aquanaut in the mer category nautilus 5811 i love the 5811 i love the nautilus i do think after so many years of having the 5711 when they introduced the 5811 in white gold with the same type of color dial as the 5711 1P, the anniversary 5711, the 40th anniversary 5711, because that's the same color dial. I do find that very f lazy. But Tech Philippe sh should have done significantly better with that, to be completely honest. Would I buy that retail? Of course I would buy that retail. Do I like the watch? I like the watch. Yes. 5740, Patek Philippe Nautilus 5740, a watch that I really f want. I wanted that retail, but that, again, Patek Philippe doesn't want to sell me a watch. 5740, I would put that in the class category, to be honest. I love that. World Timer would buy good. Aquanaut, lovely color, goes in the low category, f*** off. Nautilus 5990, rose gold with a blue dial, f beautiful watch would buy. Oh my god, Grand Complication reference number 6002. Yeah, I mean, it's the biggest, most useless watch ever in the world. I think that this watch deserves a video on its own. Can I just control, delete this watch? Let me delete this. Can't delete it. We'll leave it on. Right. Then we have some bullshit white gold Calatrava reference number 6007. I 
hate that. I genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, hate everything of it, including the history. So there you go. It's not as bad as the Green Army Aquanaut bullshit. Celestial, I would love to. Can we make a video about these two more really expensive watches just? And not talk about it at all. And not rank it at all. But take Philippe Calatrava 6119. Just saying that this Calatrava is the daddy for me, the daddy of all the Calatravas. If your Patek dealer wants to finger you with the Calatrava, then at least <laughs> make sure it's done with the 6119. Not with the 5227. Love that watch, would buy. Ladies Nautilus, f that. We don't support feminists, so we put that in the f low category. Ellipse, absolute belter of a watch that I wouldn't buy. I love that, I, I, like, I mean, I'm not a big fan of it. There's a cult following, I'm not a big fan of it. Trump watch? Yeah, it's Trump watch. I'm gonna come. I'm sorry, I'm not a big, and I love the history, there's a wee bit of history and it's a unique and it's, it's a f weird, last but not least, 5711 Tiffany. I don't know how to say this. Right, let's put it this way. If you spend more than a million on that watch, which is a $50,000 watch, which I still think is way too much money, that color is not worth a million. If you're the type of person that spent over a million for that $50,000 watch, then please go to Pride Opinion and buy a watch there. Go f*** yourself. Because I want you as a customer 